We designed the Venus Project in an attempt to deal with the problems that are coming in our country and all other countries. With the advent of automation and machines, what they call artificial intelligence, human beings are going to be replaced by machines in every area. Most people think that only the industrial worker on the production line who tightens bolts, he will be replaced. But not me. I have a mind and intellect. They can't replace that. Most large companies today have automatic voice machines installed that understand your questions and understand your answers. And the machines are getting more and more sophisticated. And somebody once posed a question, they said, well, can a machine ever surpass the performance of the designer? It can't be more intelligent than the guy that designed it or the young lady that designed it. Well, I know a little guy that designed a machine to pick up freight trains and empty them. And he can't do that. Machines always surpass the performance of the designer. The designer in a Coke factory can't move bottles fast as the machines can. Well, they'll never replace me. They've, oh, they're always saying that. We can replace anybody in any field. Today, those of you that are not familiar with it, there are machines today that are already being designed built and used experimentally for brain surgery, all manipulated by machine. What's happening in photography? All of the cameras in the future will follow the actor. They will focus automatically. You won't have a man behind the camera. And most of the actors in the future will be phased out what they'll do is photograph the head in all positions with the lips moving in every which way and generate their own characters. On television, you will have announcers that do not exist. They will be generated images in color, the sweet old lady with the gray hair. Everything will be simulated, and you will learn to love those actors. And a person once said to me, well, surely if I know the images are generated, they're not real, I'm not going to respond. Do you know how many people weep at Walt Disney's color drawings? We live in the past, and our society is rapidly moving downhill. An increase in crime, our educational system seems to be failing, our ability to outproduce other nations seems to be slowing down. We seem to be less innovative. We used to be eight, we used to be number one in new inventions in this country. Today we are 18th and slipping behind. This is what worries me. What worries me is the general direction our society is headed for. The purpose of the Venus Project is to redesign our society, not according to my wishes, but according to national need, to redesign our society so that it works. So when new machines come into industry, instead of you working five hours a day, you work two hours a day, and you work three days a week for an increase in income. That's how I want to use machines. In our present culture, we operate as a monetary system. We use money as a medium of exchange for work or services of any kind. When you use a money system, it creates incentives. This is true, but it also creates incentive for corruption and embezzlement, whereas in the Venus Project, it's a non-money system. Now think about this. When we have a depression in any country of the world, there are still automobiles and vacuum cleaners and houses, but people don't have the money to buy them. The earth is still the same place. What happened? Man designed a set of rules, and his rules operate. But if you live according to natural law, I'm not talking about man-made law, natural law. If you eat food that's bad for you, you get sick, no matter what you believe. If you don't get enough sleep, you collapse. That's natural law. In Venus Project, we uphold natural law mostly. So people learn how to live most effectively. The Venus Project is a non-monetary system, a resource-based economy. We have enough resources today in America alone and the world to build anything for anybody. There need not be street people, hungry people. We have all the technology to supply more than the needs for everyone fast.
I'm not talking about 100 years from now. It would take 10 years to change the surface of the earth to a second Garden of Eden, if we choose to do so. With the elimination of money, all the economic problems are gone. No more robbery, no more crime, because the center of the city has an access place where you can go in and check out a camera or a chemistry set or a microscope without any fee, without filling out any forms, without going before any committee. Do you see what I mean? It is available just as the islands of the South Pacific were 60 years ago. The natives pulled bananas off the trees. They ate them. They picked guava and coconuts. And you couldn't sell a banana. And you couldn't sell sand or salt water. There was so much of it, so much fish, that no one bothered each other. They never worked. All they did is went out in their canoes, went fishing, scuba diving, had fun. And the Polynesians had no word for work. Did you know that? Isn't that fantastic? And I think we're headed that way. No word for work. You go back to school, art centers, music centers, cultural centers. You travel, scuba dive think, write books, produce films, or whatever the hell you want to do. This is our aim. This is where we're going. If we don't make these changes, it's going to be a catastrophic, slow process of human suffering and misery, possibly winding up with some kind of dictatorship, which I have a tremendous fear of. So the Venus Project is, is designed to attempt to avoid that kind of problem. And your home would be designed in a manner different than any process today. You would be sitting in front of a hemisphere if you're married with your wife. And you say, I'd like a home of about 3,000 or 4,000 square feet, and it would appear kind of. They say, no, no, slow, more curvilinear, and you get more curvilinear. Then your wife says, don't you think that the kitchen is a little too near, and the kitchen is moved while you're talking? It understands language. And you'll see a building occur in front of you. And then you'll see a balcony extending over a lake. And what your wife might say, gee, how about another three feet on that balcony? You know, and it extends. And you say, that's what I want. Then you pull out a blueprint. You see? No more, I'm an architect. I'll design the house for you. That's not for you. In other words, this is real democracy. This is where you participate on the human level. Now, of course, your children have a separate section in the house. Of course, the toilet bowl is too big for them. They fall in it. They can't reach the sink. The electrical outlets are dangerous. It's like you living with a batch of giants. So the children's sector, everything is reduced, and it's changed as the children change. If this isn't love, warmth, and humane, a lot of people think that the Venus Project is a technical project of computers and scientific equipment. No. All scientific and technical equipment, to me, is so many millions of tons of junk, unless it enhances the lives of people. I, I want to tell you one thing about changing mind. No human being can really change their mind. Here's what happens. Farmers are walking around say, those Wright brothers, they'll never build no airy plane, and then it flies over. They say, you know, Clem, I changed my mind. They've been changed by events. Most people today didn't believe they see ships going off to the distant planets, or men walking on the moon. And when they do it, they say, you know, I've changed my mind. They've been changed, and that's quite different. No one can open their head and rearrange the way you think and close it again. You can't do that. We can't change our mind. We can be better informed. We can acquire more information, which causes us to undergo change. We want to translate what all religions talk about into a working process called the Venus Project. It is not a technical dictatorship. It is not 1984 or Brave New World. It is instead using the best of science and human technology to reclaim the Earth, to remove the radioactive materials we've dumped all over the place, and find a use for them, to do research and development in improving human relations and human systems. This is what the Venus Project is dedicated to. This is what it's about.